Hey there, welcome to another video. In this video, we'll talk about form submission and how we can handle uh, form data in Remix. For every Shopify app, you will have a setting where you store a specific setting to that store to your database. Now, before we save any setting to the database, let's talk about form submission and how we can handle the data that we submit from here to the backend. Because in Remix, it is a little bit different. And you have to understand it so you can have more complex setting for your app. Of course, you are not going to build it as simple as this one, but I'll try to explain all of this in this video, how action work, how loader work, and how component will retrieve those data. So let's talk about it. I have did, I did some modification behind the scene just uh, designing the setting, which is very simple, app name and description. In your case, it will be different, different setting in here. Uh, for now, let's uh, work on this. Something I don't like about React, I don't know if it's React, I think it's Polaris component, that when you have the component and you start typing, it, nothing going to happen unless you have an unchanged event on this. So let's do that first. This is the setting page, um, these are the text field, and let's add some event to save this data. For now, let's add a state so we can store the data in a state. I'm going to create a const, um, let's call it form state. Um, and this is going to use instead I have to import this from react cool okay it's called form save it should be um, form instead I have to rewrite the whole thing this is the github copilot form instead yep something like this for now um, let's put it as empty data it doesn't have anything or we can put an empty object so we save it and now let's assign the value for this. For this one, we have a value which is going to be formstep.name since this is the app name and this one should be the description. Before doing that, uh, let's complete the first one so we can work on the second one easily. On change, uh, we are going to um, run the function. This one will have the value and let's see what copilot will do set form data and value it is very simple right we use set form data uh, whatever data we have with the spirit operator and also append the name on that the same thing will go for the description so let's see copilot will help us auto complete the rest of it easy stuff but now if i come here and i start typing i can get the data saved in the field cool now we have those data in here that's easy, right? Uh, now, how do the form submission works? We have we don't have a form yet. We have what we have the fields. Let's add a button in here. At the bottom, we are going to use the button and let's call it save. We should import the button. Yeah, it is imported and it also accept an attribute and it is called submit, which we can set it to true. And this is a Polaris component, okay? So it is going to submit the form. We don't have a form yet, so whatever we click, it doesn't do anything. Now let's talk about form data and handling. If you go to the documentation of Polaris, a lot of people complain like they don't have a clean documentation. If you start from quick tutorial, uh, quick start on this tutorial, it will help you understand how it works. And also the discussion topic, especially the full stack data flow. How it works is this diagram is very easy to understand. You have your component, you have a loader, you have action. These are the three important parts of the component. Loader will load um, when the component load. It is like document on load, you get the data. An action will be filed when an action happens, like form submission or different type of action. Now, loader and actions will, will run on the server. Component will, um, will be in the client side. So whatever you put in the loader, it is going to be a server uh, site. So like data query from database and in the action, it will be the same. You are going to authenticate someone when they start logging in so you can use the action. Now, okay, let's come back to the code and work on this. Um, if I scroll down a little bit, you, they have a very good example of these are the three things that you have to have in your uh, component loader component and function. Let's copy two of them, loader and action. I'll come here at the top, I will add the loader and also I will add the, the action. 
I'll come back to, to function in a minute, but for now, let's focus on the loader. As I said, this is like document on load when um, the component load, it is going to grab the data. Let's do this. Let's say we are going to get data from database, okay? So, get data from database. This is what we will do in real life. But for this example, let's hard, co hard code this data. I'm going to create a const uh, called setting and this is going to be my app and description, something like this. Now, um, whenever you are using loader, you have to return it, okay? If you don't return it, it will give you an error. So it should return a JSON and it should be setting. Now, the import JSON from the wrong library, it should be from Remix and Note. That's all we need to do. In the JSON, uh, okay, I have to import uh, return sitting as JSON, something like this. Now, once you uh, return this data, you can access that inside your component. How do you do that? Let's come back to the documentation. I'll show you how you do. And they have something called um, use loader data. This use loader data will do that for you. So how do you do that? You will come here. Let's create a um, variable or constant. Let's just put it const settings is equal to um, use loader data, something like this. Now use loader data should be imported from Remix. So it is going to be in the Remix React. This is where we import. I'll save it and sitting should have this data, right? Now we can pass the sitting in the state and we should automatically see the data field in for this inputs. For now, it is not. These are the backend data. Let's say coming from the database, but we are faking it for now. And in here, let's pass the settings, which is this setting. It should have the JSON data, right? That we pass from the loader. Now let's come here. This is the data and it's coming from the backend, which is the loader function. If I press update it, it should update this um, in a few seconds. Um, a lot of people might say, oh, these are easy stuff, but for a lot of people, these are not, and these are confusing. That's why I'm trying to explain the best I can. Now you understand when the loader will load and how it works. It will just return the JSON and get the data from database. Let's talk about actions. Action will run if an action happened, right? A form submission. For now, we don't have a form. Let's create the form. For this one, let's wrap everything inside a form and pass it. Now form, we have two components for the form. Either we use the Remix form or we use the Polaris form. I'm not going to use Polaris form because Polaris form is behaving differently. You have to pass, I think, the on submit event, but we are going to submit this form like a normal browser does, like form submission, something like that. And I'm going to add a method for this. If I don't pass, if I do not import this, it is not going to give me intelligence. So let's come here. Uh, it is inside the React, okay? We call it form in the React Remix. And if I scroll down, it is going to accept the method and it is going to be post. So this is going to submit this form with this data. I'll save it for now. Let's come back to the browser and show you exactly how it works. I'll remove this uh, for now. Now let's see, if I press save, it is going to submit the data, but you will get this action. Okay, you define action, but you did not return anything. Okay, this is submitting the form. The action is reacting to this, but we are not re returning anything. So this is fine, right? We have the data. Cool, I will go step by step. I'm not going to uh, cut any part of the video. If I make any mistake, I'll fix it right away. Cool, now we can return something and the JSON with the JSON uh, function and get the result. For now, let's see if it works. We have the application and let's listen in the network tab, save it. Uh, we did, this is the setting and this is the JSON that we have, right? Cool, we are receiving the, the post request that we are sending. If you check the header, this is the post request and the status is 200. Okay, great. But what if I wanna get the form data, the form data that is passing in here? So 
action will accept the request the request will be the form data request whatever data you have it will be there now uh, let's create a function let's create a, a variable in here called setting and it is going to be equal to request dot form data since we are using async function we have to put um, await here so it is going to get the data with um, from async await and now the setting will be there let's pass the setting back as the object here's the thing form data will not pass an ob will not return an object right we have to change it to an object i'm going to say setting um, object from entries and then no entries i am going to pass the setting because setting will be will not be object if we don't do this it is going to change it to an object and then they, we, we return it let's save it let's see if this works if it works it should return this data right and close this and let's save it listening on the network tab it is submitting and uh, this is the post request but the response is empty hmm. this is something that confused me too in the first this input that you have in here let's check none of them have the attribute of name as you may know form data should have the attribute of name so if you have input it must have a name so you can grab them by the name right in the backend by default uh, this is not does not have a name so let's give it a name and that should fix the problem this is going to the name will be name i know it is not a good way to do it but okay name for this one will be description cool both of them have a name now this when we submit this form this data should be accessible let's come back to the network tab and again i am going to say updated now oops again let's save it this is the the request that we have and yeah this is the post request that we have and this is the data that we have in the backend now that you have access to this data in the action and the setting you can easily store it in database you can do whatever you want with this but i just returned it to see if this is actually working or not this is 101 of how you can handle the data in the remix so in the next video we are going to talk about apis how we can set up an api and send it to an api instead of sending a form um, request like this but this is, I think it is, it is a lot clean, like you have everything here. In the future, your component might grow and you might be confused uh, where the API is, where you save the data. Uh, on those, on those cases, you can have, you can create a model and instead of doing all of this, you just import your model in here, let's say wishlist model, and then you can uh, do all sorts of stuff. For this example, these are just minor data. So you can, of course, re uh, refactor it the way you want. Um, that's I think all I have to explain in this video. I hope it has been informative uh, and yeah if you have any question you can ask below but in the next video we'll continue the journey. Thank you.